All right, good morning, guys. Time for some coffee. And I'm pretty excited about today's mail. I got a uh, card and I've got an autographed baseball. And these two things are actually related to each other. So I'll start with the card. Cardboard sandwich and painter's tape, that's nice. All right, awesome. So we have got a 53 Bowman color of Enos Country Slaughter near Mint 7. Look at that thing. That is pretty sweet. Any of you that have gone looking for this card know how much of a pain in the butt it is to try to, try to find one that is decently centered. This one is pretty close. It's definitely not it's definitely not centered, but it's close enough for me. Um, it's a little left heavy, but I can I can live with it. The actual print job though looks great. I mean it's it's pretty sweet. And I just love this photograph. This is one of those spring training additions to this set I and mean, most of them are either Polo Grounds or Yankee Stadium but this is definitely neither of those freaking awesome photograph let's take a look at the back here all right so pretty excited to finally have this card in the set I've been trying to find one for a while and this one came up and I said, yep, that'll do. Okay, so like I said, the ball is actually related and fairly unique uh, find. So I decided to take a look at this thing finally. So first and foremost, alright what we've got here is a ball with multiple signatures and what we're looking at here is actually I don't know if you can see that there. Let me see if I can get that to focus. So I'm not sure if you can read that, but it says Professional Baseball Fund. This is actually a baseball from World War II and signed by a number of members of a base team and included somewhere on here. There he is. Eno Slaughter, right here on the top. So Slaughter was assigned to the San Antonio Aviation Cadet Center. And that's actually where this ball comes from. So initially when he enlisted, he was interested in becoming a pilot, but it turned out that he was actually colorblind. So instead, he became a physical education instructor for about 200 troops. So he was assigned to the 509th Base Headquarters Squadron. So apparently in 1943, he led the team with a 498 batting average, believe it or not, in about 70 plus games or so. So since Slaughter wasn't able to serve in combat, he used his abilities to serve the country in other ways to help further the war effort. So for example, he participated in a war bonds game that took place at the Polo Grounds in New York and they ended up raising over $800 million. So another thing that Slaughter did was he and a bunch of other players toured the Pacific and followed the troops as they made their way 
And what they would do was going from island to island like Tinian and Iwo Jima and Saipan, they would stage games there for the troops. Obviously there weren't diamonds, so they would have to make a baseball field from scratch and basically use whatever they could find. So they'd grab military crates, for example, and turn those into bleachers. So like I said, this is a ball that was specifically commissioned for World War II, and you can see here on the front the Professional Baseball Fund stamp. And this was a Worth baseball. You can see there's kind of faded, but there's the uh, Worth logo right here. It says Worth, another name for value. Um, so what they did was they made a deal with all the major equipment suppliers to make a significant discount so that they could put together what they called baseball kits to send to all of their troops, both here in the States and overseas. And, you know, it'd be like a bunch of bats and balls. Sometimes they'd have a separate kit that had catcher's equipment in it as well. And they'd send those out for the troops for, for their use. So some of the signature, there's a ton of signatures on here, obviously. And I've been having fun trying to track down um, who these guys are. Um, I've been able to find a few of them, um, so for example, let's see here, here, uh, Fred Shesky right here. Fred Shesky, um, before the war, was in the minor leagues and kind of bouncing around different, different coastal leagues and stuff, and he actually was on the El Dorado Oilers. Which, is a, which was a small team out of Arkansas in 1941, before he uh, joined up in the war. And let's see who else, Dave, Dave Coble right here, right below him. Uh, Dave Coble actually played for the Philadelphia Phillies for one season in 39, um, before he eventually went, went into the military. Um, and then let's see, who else did I find? There's a bunch of different guys on here. Don here, Don Finfrock. This guy right here. Um, he was on the Wilson Tobbs, which is a uh, coastal team out of North Carolina, up until 1941 when he joined up in the war. So all these guys had some affiliation with baseball, um, or maybe they just enjoyed the game and. And, uh, and Slaughter recruited them for the team. And being a history buff, I love stuff like this. I mean, you know, the only valuable signature on this ball, I guess, would be Slaughter. But to me, this is just a really cool piece of, of you know, war history, American history, and baseball history for that matter. So, thanks for checking out the video, guys.